everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, tonight, we have a very special presentation for you. We're going to be talking about AUC's BMSA, so the American University of the Caribbean School of Medicine's Black Medical Student Association. My name is Laura Dwyer. I am the Associate Director of Admissions at AUC. Um, I've been with AUC for about five years, a little over five years, and I work with students from prospective status all the way through their matriculation on the island. So I may have spoken with some of you out there before. Um, I also conduct interviews, which we will talk about in a second. Um, but the stars of today are our Black Medical Student Association panel. So we have four current students joining us. Uh, and they're going to talk a little bit more about their experiences at AUC and as members of BMSA. Uh, before we get to them, though, I'd like to give you a brief overview of the AUC program. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about the admissions process. We're going to talk about student life in St. Martin. We'll talk about what you'll experience academically as a student. Um, and then through clinicals and residency, just to give you a little bit of background and let you know a little bit more about the program that these four students are experiencing. So why do students choose AUC? Um, they choose AUC because we have a curriculum that is comparable to that of US medical schools. And um, we have small class sizes with truly personalized attention from our faculty members. Our faculty come from generally the US and Canada and have MDs, PhDs, or MD PhDs. We have modern campus facilities on the island of St. Martin, where you'll do your basic science coursework. And then we have clinical rotations throughout the United States and the United Kingdom. So your third and fourth year are in the US and UK. The journey of a, an AUC student looks very similar to that of a US medical student. So you may be wondering what your program will look like if you do decide to go to an international medical school such as AUC. So semesters one through five are your basic sciences. Um, and those take place on the St. Martin campus. So um, it's just under 20, it's just about 20 months, just under two years of basic sciences. After you complete your basic sciences, you have four months to take your step one exam. So the USMLE step one exam is the first step of the US medical licensing exam. This is the same test that US medical students take. And so you have four months to prepare for and take that exam. Um, so 20 months on the island plus four months to take the USMLE step one equals your first two years of medical school. Once you pass your step one exam, you'll submit your passing score to your clinical advisor and they'll place you in your clinicals. So semesters six through nine and a half or your third and fourth year are clinical rotations in the United States and the United Kingdom. After you complete your step two, or after you complete your clinicals, you'll take your step two exam. The, clinic, the step two is a clinical skills and a clinical knowledge exam. So it's actually a two part, two day exam. And once you pass that, congratulations, you graduate. You have your MD degree. Um, but you're not done yet. The life of a physician rolls on, always academic. So you'll do your residency placement while you're actually doing your clinical rotations. Um, you will match through the NRMP, the National Residency Match Program. And uh, this is where you specialize. So um, this is where you get your specialized training if you want to become a surgeon or a pediatrician or uh, a gynecologist, a psychiatrist. Um, this is where you do all of your specializations. During your residency program, you'll take your USMLE Step 3 exam, which is the third part of the licensing in the United States. And once you pass your Step 3 exam, congratulations, you are a board licensed physician. AUC graduates are el eligible for residency and licensure in all 50 states without any restrictions. So as you notice when I talk through here, the only exams you're taking are the USMLE Step exams. You don't have to take any extra exams to be licensed in the United States. Okay, let's talk about the admissions process. So how do you become an AUC student? Uh, we look for a lot of different things in the candidate. And one of my favorite things about AUC is that we're very holistic when we review our candidates. So we don't believe that you have to have a 4.0 or a perfect MCAT score to be a fantastic physician. So the things that we look for in a candidate are your overall GPA and your science GPA. The average matriculated student at AUC has an overall GPA of a 3.3 and a science GPA of a 3.1. You do have to take the MCAT and your scores are valid for five years. Um, and the average matriculated student has scored a 498 on the MCAT. 
We also look at your letters of recommendation. So we want people to uh, write on your behalf and tell us all the great things that they've uh, that you've done with them. Maybe it's research, maybe it's uh, just outstanding classroom um, experiences with them, maybe it's volunteer work. So you'll have the opportunities to submit a few letters of recommendation on your behalf. We also look at your education and employment history. So your CV or your resume, we do care what you've done outside of the classroom. Um, and then you'll write a personal statement. That's your opportunity to talk a little bit more about yourself and tell us about your journey to medical school. Um, I always like to emphasize the personal part of personal statement. So make it personal. Tell us your story. Tell us what makes you unique. Tell us about yourself. Uh, don't tell us what you think we want to hear. Tell us what you want us to hear. Uh, transcripts. We look at every institution you've attended and we look at grade trends. So uh, maybe you had a tough time adjusting your first and second year, but then you really picked it up and you did better your third and fourth year. That does matter to our admissions committee. Um, and then we also have a personal interview, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, and a bachelor's degree is required before you can matriculate at AUC, but you can apply while you are still completing your degree. Um, the prerequisite courses that you need to take are biology with a lab, general chemistry with a lab, organic chemistry with a lab, and general physics of a lab for uh, one full year of each of those courses. I'd like to point this out because you can major in anything and go to medical school. So um, as long as you take these classes, you can um, explore some things that you're passionate about um, in, in undergrad. And maybe you're a non-traditional student who is now seeking out uh, go, doing medical education. These are the prerequisite courses that you need to take regardless of your bachelor's degree. After you apply, um, we'll do an initial, initial review of your application and uh, you may be invited to interview. So an interview is required, but it does not guarantee admission. Um, interviews are one-on-one -on -one and last about an hour. And then after um, your interview, you will typically receive your decision within about two weeks. How much does our program cost? Uh, the medical sciences portion, semesters one through five, the basic sciences when you're on the island are $21,650 per semester, and then your clinical sciences are $24,272 each semester for semesters six through nine, and then your last semester is a half semester, so we give you a nice discount. It's $12,136. How do you pay such a large sum of money for medical school? The good news is, is AUC is eligible for federal student aid uh, through the US government. So you're eligible to apply for FAFSA, which is probably the way that you uh, finance your undergraduate education. Uh, it would be the same process for financing your graduate medical education. Uh, we have a full financial aid office. So you can see their um, email address on the screen here. If you have questions about financial aid, you can absolutely reach out to them. Um, and if you're Canadian, uh, there is some Canadian information on our website as well. We also offer a variety of scholarships. So uh, we want to reward our students for doing well inside the classroom and outside of the classroom. Uh, there's an alumni heritage scholarship. So if you have shadowed an AUC alumni or you know an AUC alumni who can write on your behalf, um, you could be eligible to win uh, the Alumni Heritage Scholarship, and that would be your first semester of medical education paid for. We also have a first generation MD award. So if you're the first person in your immediate family to attend medical school, you could be eligible for the first generation MD award. Um, that is a renewable scholarship up to five semesters. So it's potentially a $50,000 award. Uh, we also have a community outreach scholarship. If you are involved in your community and um, you write a compelling essay, uh, you may win that community outreach award, and that's renewable up to three semesters. So that's potentially a $30,000 scholarship. Uh, we also have some academic scholarships that are brand new, um, and they're highlighted on our website. So you can also win uh, $10,000, $5,000, or first semester tuition for some academic scholarships. So definitely check those out on our website. And you can apply for scholarships at the same time you submit your application to the school. We have three start dates. Um, so AUC is flexible. Um, you can start in January, May, or September. No matter when you start, it's still a four-year program. And uh, we have rolling admissions. So we accept applications up to one year in advance of the start date. And then um, you can begin in January, May, or September. 
January is, and May are our smaller class sizes, and then September is the traditional time that students will start medical school. So that's our larger class size. It's about 220 students. We are still accepting applications for May 2018, September 2018, and we just started accepting applications for January 2019. So if you're interested in starting medical school in May, uh, reach out to us. Uh, maybe we can get that going for you. Your learning environment. So our panel is actually sitting inside one of these buildings right now. Um, so when we talk to them, um, you might hear some tropical breezes with all of those palm trees around them. They are on the island of St. Martin. So uh, the island of St. Martin is, uh, it's a very special island. It's a, it's a small island, but it is a, it's the smallest island in the world that's shared by two sovereign powers. So it's half Dutch and half French. We're located on the Dutch side of the island. English is spoken everywhere, and the U.S. dollar is also accepted everywhere. So it's a pretty easy transition uh, from the U.S. down to St. Martin, and we can talk about some of the things that our panel is experiencing uh, living in St. Martin. So those would be some great questions that you may want to ask them. Life as an AUC student. Um, so I, I will do a brief overview here, but I don't want to ruin what our panel might be, uh, have to say. Um, so we have 22 student organizations on our campus. Um, one of them is the Black Medical Student Organization, which you'll hear more about. Um, and we'll also talk to our students about some of the other organizations that they may be involved in. Um, and then there's also an emphasis on health and wellness on our campus. So we want to make sure that you're happy and healthy inside and outside of the classroom so that you can perform uh, up to your best standard um, in your medical school education. Um, and I know that BMSA hosts some health and wellness activities, which we'll definitely talk to them about. Um, and then St. Martin is a beautiful camp, is a, is a beautiful island to be on, and our campus is particularly in a beautiful spot. So um, definitely we'll want to talk to our panel today about um, what it's like to live in St. Martin. Our faculty members. We have some really fantastic faculty. Um, they're really the heart of AUC. And uh, this, this highlights some of our um, some of our really fantastic faculty here. Um, they come from the U.S. and the U.K. And, and Canada. They have M.D.s, Ph.D.s, and M.D. Ph.D.s, and they really come from fantastic institutions. Um, why do they come to AUC? They come to AUC because they love to teach. Uh, their number one appointment is teaching. So, um, you know, they may have come from an institution where research was number one, maybe writing grants sometimes came above teaching their courses, um, but really their heart is in uh, helping students succeed. So they come to us and their number one appointment is teaching. They still do publications, they still research, they still do that uh, in the background but their number one reason for being there is to teach you. Um, so they come from great places like UC Santa Barbara, the University of Michigan, Texas A&M, and Howard University. Uh, and you can read more about our faculty members and their profiles on our website. Uh, during your first five semesters, you're not just in the classroom, you are getting uh, your introduction to clinical medicine. So we have a patient simula simulation center and an integrated clinical medicine lab and mock patient examination room. So while you're in the basic sciences, you are training and preparing for your clinicals, um, which is the next step of your journey. So um, after you complete your basic sciences, you'll take your step one exam. Um, this is uh, maybe the most important test you'll ever take. So uh, in 2016, there was a survey of uh, program directors, uh, residency program directors, and 93% of them said the step one score was the primary factor when selecting applicants to interview. Um, and so how do our students do on that step one exam? We have an 89.4% first time pass rate in 2016. The average score of our students is a 215, and the average score of an international medical graduate, that's what an IMG is, is a 210. So our students are outpacing our peers. Core teaching hospitals. So once you pass your step one exam, you'll submit your passing score to your clinical advisor and they'll place you into our, our clinical rotation. Um, and the clinical rotations are throughout the United States and the United Kingdom. Um, you'll do core rotations and elective rotations. So there are multiple ways you can complete these rotations. You can um, stay in one hospital the whole time. You can go to an area where we have multiple hospitals and rotate through different 
um, hospitals that still live in the same area, or you can travel around. So it, it's a little bit up to you how you, um, how you complete your clinical rotations. After you complete your clinical rotations, you'll uh, go into the residency match. So as you are a clinical student, you'll be working with our Office of Student and Professional Development to prepare your residency application. So this is where you'll apply to programs throughout the country um, to, to do that specialized training. So maybe you want to be a surgeon, maybe you want to be a pediatrician, maybe you want to be a neurologist. Um, this is where you would apply to those residencies. Um, and to, to get that specialized training. Um, so our students do very well in the residency match. Um, this past year, we have an 84.4% first time match rate. Um, we have 15.6% did not match, um, but I would like to call your attention to the whole numbers. So because we have a small student body, um, the difference of a couple numbers can move those percentage points a lot. So um, when you're looking at the number of students who match, there's 232 students who match. Um, and only 43 who did not match. Everyone always wants to ask, well, what happens to those students who don't match? They'll go into the match the next year. So this is a really great graph to show you where our students go by cohort. So the blue bars are the first year attainment rate for residency programs. So the first time a cohort was eligible to apply, um, the blue bar is how many students matched. The red bar is the subsequent years. So 2014, for example, the first time that class was eligible to match, 83.3% of them matched. Current day is the red bar. So 90.7% of the 2014 class is in residency programs currently. Um, so 2014, if they didn't match, they would apply in 2015, 2016, and 2017. Um, and 90% of them are in uh, residency programs. Same for 2015, 84.4% first time match rate, and then current day, 90% of that class is in US and Canadian residency programs. 2016, 88.5% match rate, first time match rate, and then currently 90% of them are in US and Canadian residency programs. Uh, and then that blue bar for 2017, 84.4%, that's the first match year. Um, and then next year we'll have that red bar to show the percent who matched the second time. Most of our alumni um, are in the primary care field. So we have a passion for serving those uh, through primary care internal medicine, pediatrics, um, those kinds of fields. But you are not, uh, you're not pigeonholed into that. Um, students who come from AUC get very competitive residency matches each year. So um, this is just highlighting some of our 2017 competitive residency placements. Um, we had a neurology match. We had a psychiatry match. Uh, one of the most competitive, um, maybe if not the most competitive, uh, residency program to get into in the entire country is ophthalmology. Uh, and we had a student match into ophthalmology in 2017. Surgery, internal medicine at Howard University, radiology in Baltimore. So this is to show you that you're not limited. You may have a misconception that when you go to a, a, a Caribbean medical school that you can't get a competitive residency match. And this shows that each year we really do get those great competitive matches, and it's very consistent. Um, if you look on our website, we have a residency placement report, and it really details um, in, a, in heavy detail where our students go for their residencies. So if you're curious about uh, where students are matching, you can go on our website and look at that residency placement report. Um, 2017 is on there, and then there's also a few years behind that, too. So if you're interested in 2016, 2015, 2014, you can also see that. Um, so the journey of uh, every one of our students looks very different. Um, whether you're a non-traditional student who's looking to return to their dream and go to medical school, or maybe you're just coming out of undergrad, um, AUC services a lot of different kinds of people. Uh, and so we are uh, happy to talk to our panel today about their experiences. Um, so thank you for joining us. Um, I just threw a lot of information your way. So if your head is spinning and you have a lot of uh, questions that you want to ask about the admissions process, uh, my contact information is on the screen. So you can email me at ldwire at I'm happy to answer any of those questions.
Um, but the real stars of our show um, are our Black Medical Student Association panel. So tonight we're celebrating Black History Month and our Black Medical Student Association, who's doing some really great things on our campus. And so I'd like to invite you as our, um, as our CMSA club members are introducing themselves. If you look, um, you'll see a chat feature on your GoToWebinar screen. Um, send in the questions that you have for them and we'll ask them out loud and, and you'll get all your questions answered. Okay, so um, tonight we're joined by Brian, Ashlyn, Leanne, and Nick. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. From St. Martin. All right, so they're in St. Martin. Um, and, um, you know, enjoying some nice February warm weather. We're all jealous, uh, everyone here in the north. <laughs> yeah. Um, so if you could, um, while, um, while our attendees are um, sending in their questions, if you could each introduce yourself, um, let us know your name, um, let us know where you're from, tell us about where you went to school and what you majored in, um, and, and a little bit more about yourself. So. Um, Brian, let's start with you. Okay. Um, yes, my name is Brian Uzamba. Um, I'm the president of BMSA. Um, and I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I also majored in biology at Georgia State University. The great, the great. Um, and uh, what else? Uh, something, something special about me. Um, yeah. I like to cook. Um, and yes, um, I, I, I love to run and exercise, stay in good shape, mm -hmm. plenty okay. of exercise out here, so plenty of things to do. <laughs> um, all right, well, I guess I'm next. I'm Ashlyn Brown. Um, as you can see, I'm a second semester. I attended Baylor for undergrad and my major was health science studies with a focus in pre-med and then I um, went to UT Austin or UT Texas um, and my got my master's degree in kinesiology. Uh, I'm, as you can see, I'm born and raised in Texas, Austin specifically. Um, as far as something, I guess, unique about myself or different, whatever, um, I did, I competed as a bodybuilder last year mm. so as like just like Brian said I guess I like to be healthy and in shape so there you go hi I'm Leanne Love um, I'm also a second semester student um, I was born in New Orleans Louisiana but I grew up in Dallas Texas my undergraduate institution was Xavier University of Louisiana, which is also in New Orleans, where I got my undergrad degree in um, chemistry pre-med. And also I got my master's at Tulane University in organic chemistry. Um, something fun about me. Mm, I really enjoy cooking and no, that's about it. <laughs> but, but yeah. Hi, my name is Nick Josain. I'm also a second semester student. Um, I went to Florida Atlantic University and um, got a degree in biology. I um, got a master's at Barry University in biomedical science. And um, I guess a fun fact about me is I, I love sports. I love um, playing basketball, I love football, um, love even baseball. Um, I, the thing that you'll quickly find when you come to AUC is that the whole student body is very active. We love going to the gym and we love competing against each other. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. Um, I guess uh, you talked a little bit about your, your background. How did you, each of you find AUC? Um, we know that the medical school landscape is very competitive. So what brought you to AUC? Okay. Um, originally, um, you know, I, I searched out and kind of looked at um, different medical schools um, in the Caribbean and internationally just to see, you know, the options and what would probably be the best fit for me. And um, AUC, um, just looking at all the programs and um, the support systems and stuff that, you know, is provided, I thought it would probably be the best bet for me um, to, to go to the school. I think. 
AC, it just, I don't know, it just, it was just calling me. And so far since I got here, it's just been a great experience. So, um, for me, <laughs> thanks, Brian. Um, for me, my experience, I actually heard of AUC when I was back in undergrad, um, but I didn't really pursue it until after I went through the interview process in the States and got a few interviews, but no acceptances. Um, and so then I looked into Caribbean schools and I um, actually did a lot of research as just far as um, trying to get to the core of the stigma that comes with Caribbean schools. And after doing my research, I found that a doctor is a doctor, you know, no matter where you get your degree from, as long as you um, offer true patient care, that's what ultimately matters. So um, I applied to AUC, Ross, and SG, or St. George's, and I got accepted to all three. Um, but the deciding factor, because I was actually stuck between SGU and here, and honestly, the fact that St. Martin is probably the only one that's not considered a third world country and pretty equivalent. I mean, you're not going to get every all the perks that you're accustomed to back in the States, but it's you're going to be able to survive here. Like, it's pretty, it's gorgeous, of course, but um, just as far as accommodations that you're accustomed to, this seems to be, from what I researched, and it's proven true thus far, it's the closest to what I'm accustomed to as far as lifestyle goes. And of course, education is great as well. <laughs> yeah, so my story, I'm sorry, story is pretty similar as well. So. I took the MCAT in 2016, and I had a few interviews as well, and towards the end of the application cycle, you know, I hadn't heard back. I had a wait list at one school, and, it, you know, it just became discouraging at that point. And, um, so, actually, a friend of mine told me to, you know, look into it, so, of course, I applied. I ended up applying to Ross, AUC, St. George's, AUA, and I, I Saber as well. And uh, I got into all of those, and at that point, it was just kind of deciding, you know, where I wanted to go. So, <laughs> as also, I looked at, you know, some of the same factors, you know, island life, um, academics, class size, tuition, and just, you know, some of the perks of the programs in general. And ultimately, of course, I chose AUC for some of the same reasons as well. Um, the more developed island, the smaller class sizes compared to Ross and St. George's. And I just felt like it would be the best fit for me. And, you know, it's, it's I've, I've enjoyed myself, you know, given the circumstances, you know, having to relocate, you know, we made it work. It, it was a great experience, a very humbling experience, but, but, you know, we made it work and, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be back on the island and, you know, making it, making it work. Actually for me is short and quick. I had a, a close friend, Mecca, who referred me to the school and I trusted him and I came here. Well, there you go. <laughs> Good. Brian, as president of BMSA, um, why don't you tell our audience a little bit more about the club and the mission of the club? Oh, yeah, okay. Gotcha. So um, BMSA, um, it's more like a support system. We're, we're a family. We're, um, no, we're, we're here to to support each other academically, and also we participate in many, um, you know, um, charity and and volunteers, social events, and different things like that. Which is all about uniting and really just, um, you know, helping each other get through this experience. Because you know, med school is fine, but we realize that you know, it, it, you, you don't need to do it by yourself. And I think that's one thing that BMSA really stands for, because we also have um, this mentor 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 mentee uh, program that we're doing right now, um, and it's just really introducing um, the upcoming students and incoming students about you know how how they should go about studying and so, as far as like different resources that could probably help you, guide you in the right direction. You know, the certain steps that we had to take when we first started, you know, you're already given the insight of what that's going to be like. And that just gets you more prepared for ultimately 
being prepared for the step. So that's that's just the overview about where we're about. Um, right. Also, did I miss anything? No. No. Yeah, I think that's about it. Um, y'all want to input anything else? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. That's, so, that's, tell me, you said you you serve as an academic support system for each other, um, and you uh, especially help incoming students um, kind of adjust to AUC. So, tell me a little bit more about the academic support that you provide to each other, and and how you help incoming students. Okay. Um, for example, right now um, I have. Um, you want? Go ahead. Um, I can explain the mentor mentee program a bit more. So we came up with an idea of you know just to wait for the first semesters and to you know get connected to some of the upperclassmen. And also since you know our semester last last semester was really rare for us as first semesters. So we didn't get a chance to interact with the seconds who are now thirds as much as we would have liked. So we also opened the door for you know second semesters to you know interact with some of the third semesters because like Brian said, med school it, it's hard and honestly you can't do it by yourself. You need a support system in some way, shape, or form. It's, it's mandatory. And so we you know as BMSA we said okay well let's try to um, connect first semesters with seconds and seconds with thirds and so forth and we had to sign up for that and you know we had a good turnout we had about um about 10 people um signed up to be mentors and mentees and we connected them we matched them based on their interests and um what they were looking for in a mentor and and so far the reviews have been pretty well we're planning um a mentor mentee event just you know facilitate that that relationship and keep it going and we told them that the goal was, you know, academic as well as, you know, personal. If they're having trouble with school, okay, here are the resources that help me, for example, anatomy. I'm struggling in anatomy. This helps me get through it. Or I can put you in contact with this person, you know, just ways to help them get through and, you know, whatever they're struggling with. And also personal, oh, I miss home. Oh, I'm I'm homesick. Oh, I'm you know I'm not I don't like it here. I don't like it on the island. I, you know things like that. Like how do you cope with medical school and you know and being a medical student in general on the island? So that was the the core mission of the program. And piggybacking off of Leanne, um, since we are pretty much rebuilding BMSA since Preston, um, this is something that we do plan on continuing throughout. Um, throughout, I guess, the AUZ existence. Um, so <laughs> since we only have first through thirds here right now, that's why you only hear us talking about first through thirds, but it's ultimately going to be developing connections between first and fifth, or fourth and thirds, fourth and seconds, things like that. So as long as we continue to grow, and ultimately the larger body that we have within the program, the more that we can do with it as well. Thank you. And um, I know that you guys do a lot of things outside of the classroom as well. So tell me about the social activities that you do and the volunteer work that you do um, on the island. Um, so this semester, again, you know, it's been kind of slow getting back started. But in the past, we've done a lot of community service events, such as um, Community Action Day, which um, we're going to talk about. And also, we use we normally work with the Sickle Cell Foundation here on, on the island. Um, that's been a little. We've had a few setbacks. We're trying to get that back going, but we're definitely working on that because that is something that BMSA does on a regular, and it has been very successful. And we've actually donated a good amount of money in the past to that organization. So that's that's a, con a connection that we we're trying to rebuild at the moment. Um, for Community Action Day, Brian's actually going to talk about that because um, yeah. he he. Um, he spearheaded that event. Okay. So yeah, Community Action Day, um, what we did, um, uh, Gus also was out there with us. Um, but we um, went to Guyana Bay. Um, yeah, we went to Guyana Bay. This is my personal experience. Community Action Day, is, it's, a, it's a big day where there's a lot of different um, opportunities to um, Participating community service on the island, you know, especially going through what this island just went through as far as um, 
having the hurricane, um, you know, come through and do what it did. Um, but <laughs> yeah, we um, so uh, what I did, and as well, Ashlyn as well. Yeah. We were on Guyana Bay, and we went. We actually hiked on this trail. Um, it was hosted by Trisport, I believe. Mm -hmm. And we hiked the trail and went all the way to um, a beach. You remember the beach? I thought it was the beach. This is a beach. There's a specific name. Oh, uh, I don't. Okay. But yeah, on the beach, there was, uh, we just picked up a lot of garbage and, you know, different debris that was left over there. And we um, hiked that with, um, with, with all the debris and garbage as well. You know, we had trash bags and plenty of water. And, you know, it was a very good time. It was a very good view. We had a um, guy lead us. His name was Pablo. Um, very nice guy. He's from the island. He's been here about 30 years. You know, he's just kind of giving us a history about, um, you know, Guyana Bay and, you know, about the Hiker Trail and the different things that they had out there. And I thought it was a very great experience as well as, um, it was a, it was a great experience in many ways because we also got to know some of the student body and some of the upcoming first semesters. And it's something that everybody can kind of get together and do and, and really make a difference. And we, we actually made that beach look a lot cleaner in just those few, what it was like, like hours. Hour. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a great experience. Right. And so I guess that that's addressing our community service aspect, but we also do fun things. So um, what we have coming up this weekend actually is a basketball tournament. Mm -hmm. So um, pretty much with everything that we do, proceeds are going to some foundation that we're um, like um, like Leanne said that we are participating in. So that's um, coming up soon. And then also later on this semester, we plan on doing a talent show which is just for fun, um, but we hope to have a huge turnout from the student body. Already people are planning acts and things like that to participate. So the more that we, like I keep reiterating, the more that we stay here, um, or the more that we're active within BMSA, the more opportunities that we'll provide. So already I think next semester we're talking about um, doing a volleyball tournament possibly and another fun activity. So we try to get the student body involved in BMSA just because we're labeled the Black Medical Student Association doesn't necessarily mean that we only accept black people. So already we have so many different um, ethnicities participating in our events. So it's pretty awesome. Yeah, excellent. Thank you for sharing those activities. They sound fun. I can't wait to come down to St. Martin and participate with you guys. Um, tell me about um, tell me about your experiences with the the culture of the campus. So, what's the AUC culture like? And um, you know, uh, as students of color, how do you experience diversity on campus? And what are your what are your um, what are your thoughts on the diversity of the AUC student body? Um. Okay. Um, the AUC student body, um, I say we are very diverse. There's people from all over US, Canada, and from very different nationalities and ethnicities. And I feel like it's a big melting pot. Um, and everybody really gets along very well. You know, we all share our own different experiences. And, you know, depending on where somebody comes from, they might have never met anybody um, from that specific region or anything like that. So as far as I know, um, last, was the last semester? Two semesters ago, we had like a, a cultural week. And during this cultural week, um, it was it was a lot of different events that went on. We had like a lot of dancing. So just showing different dancing, you know, like salsa and, you know, what else? It was like, um, it, was that, it was an African themed dance, Hawaiian, Hulu dancing. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it was stuff like that. We also had um a day where they prepared like different meals from every different culture, and it it was a great turnout. Everybody enjoyed it. They had fun and just learned a little bit about you know the different ethnicities here, um, you know at AUC, and then it's a very comfortable environment and it's very open. And, yeah. yeah, and even to um piggyback on what Brian is saying, 
Um, AUC is a huge melting pot. Um, I grew up in Miami and I never considered it to be um, secluded um, and closed off because there's a lot of like people from different Caribbeans, like um, Jamaicans, Haitians, um, Puerto Ricans, Cubans, but it's mainly Caribbean. Um, by coming to AUC, I actually learned so much from different cultures. Like I have a couple of Armenian friends, Pakistani friends, um, I tried their food. I love Korean food now, <laughs> and um, it's it's a it's a it's a good experience because I'm I'm seeing the world as a whole versus just seeing just Miami or just one aspect of the United States. Excellent. Um, we have a we have some questions from the audience. Um, Marcus would like to know how was the adjustment studying for classes um, coming from your undergraduate deg degrees? And I believe some of you mentioned that you have some graduate degrees. Um, what was it like transitioning to doing medical level coursework? Um, I can start with that one. It was very it was a, it was shocking for me because um, my master's program there was not a lot of studying per se it was mostly research based for me so getting back into the swing of actually studying for eight ten hours a day was very was was, a, was an adjustment but i mean you get used to it you find what works for you and, and you just you you make it work you know some people they can sit down and study for 10 hours straight no problem some people you know they have to split it up different ways and some people like to study alone. Some people like to study in groups. You know, you just, you, you, you figure out what works for you very early on and, and you just go with it and stuff. So that's, that's what it was like for me. <laughs> for me, um, yes, uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a big difference. It's, it's, that, it's medical school, so it, it, it requires a lot of attention and, it, it definitely takes a lot more time, but at the same time, I feel like being efficient is really the best outlook on it. So really, like Leanne was saying, you know, figuring out what's really best for you, you know, for, uh, for me, per se, I'm not the best person that could study straight 10 hours. I like to break it up into little small sections and being able to see something in a different perspective. That way, you know, my, my way of retaining it you know, kind of gives me a whole outlook on what I'm actually learning. So, but it, it's definitely a bigger transition coming from, you know, undergrad into medical school. But it, it, it's something that, you know, you're just going to experience and you're going to learn. I don't, I feel like, you know, it, it's for you, it's for everybody, you know, but it's, it's, it's there if you want. And that's why we're also here to help and give that social, I mean, the academic support you know, to kind of guide you in that direction. So, you know, you, you won't have to slip up on your own. But no, you it's definitely doable. So that's my output on it. And um, even to piggyback on what Brian is saying, um, med school isn't, uh, it is not hard, but it's the volume. Um, so much information comes at you so quickly that you have to be efficient. You have to learn um, what type of learner you are. You have to do a, a lot of um, self-reflect, ref, reflectment, or reflecting, reflecting. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know, going to um, office hours and discussing different concepts, or even going to the tutoring. There's a lot of resources here um, that AUC has provided for us to to help us get through these courses. So um, again, that's why we're here. That's why we offer. Uh, a mentoring program so that you can get through your first semester. Um, and I guess one thing that for me, I feel like the biggest difference between undergrad and medical school, besides the, of course, the amount of content that you're getting every day, is just that, like, I didn't even think of real, or I didn't even realize that classes were going to be every single day. Like, in undergrad, you have Monday, Wednesday, possibly Friday classes. And so like you have that break in between to kind of cushion yourself, catch up, you know, you can have a little slack room, maybe study for a subject three hours or whatever. But like here, you're getting the same class every day, 
classes are probably one class is an hour and a half, the other two are an hour long. And it might not seem that much, but again, you're gonna have the exact same class tomorrow. And you're expected to have at least understood that information you got today. So that way you build off of what you had um, yesterday. And everything comes back. Yeah. It all comes back. So. so you can't, you really can't sleep on your work. And like, you'll see if you decide to come to AUC or no matter where you go, you'll see that pretty much your time will be spent studying. I mean, you do need to have a social life because you have to somewhat be normal. Like you can't just study nonstop. But like Brian just said, pretty much this is like your job. It's um, no joke. But again, what Nick said, this really like the recurrent theme I keep hearing is that medical schools, it's the information we're given isn't hard. Like it's building off of stuff that you've already learned in undergrad. It's just you're digging deeper into the concept that you already learned and you're getting this stuff every day. So do not fall behind. Yeah, that's the big that's thing. Tip. Don't fall behind. <laughs> but it's doable. We're here. So don't let that intimidate you. It's very doable. So many people make it through. What about faculty interaction and uh, faculty, you know, what, how involved are your faculty? Um, and someone's also asking how many classes you take each semester. So that might, um, that might fall into that answer. How many classes? How, how many? Do we take, how many? It, it depends, yeah. it depends <laughs> on the semester. Um, I think first semester, was there five classes? Yeah. But, but they're not all at one time. And they're not weighted the same. Yeah. Um, they're not the same time commitment. Usually you have three main classes that are just like your core classes from, to end. from the whole way through the semester. Yeah. And then you might, for example, for first semester, you'll have anatomy, um, molecular cell and bio, which is MCB, and you'll also have histology. Histology ends um, about 75% into the semester, and then you take embryology, which is about, about a month longer or so. So you have four courses, but again, they're not, the entire semester and you also have that fifth one is um, intro to clinical medicine that Laura spoke about earlier um, which is uh, you know also spaced out you don't you don't do that every day so that's that's more spaced out um, but again you have three courses that you you know you, you you have all day you have every day all day that you really have to focus on for example for second semester right now I'm taking MCB2 physiology one and immunology, those are for the entire semester. And then I'm gonna to have to add bio, bio statistics towards the end of this, this semester for about a month or so. And then I also have ICM two, which I'm currently taking um, about once a week um, right now. So as far as interaction with faculty, um, so far our experiences have been that, for the most part, every faculty member is very open in um, offering office hours and Specifically, one of my favorite professors at this point, at this moment, is Dr. Colden, who's our professor for physiology. Um, she intentionally opens up the floor for us to set weekly appointments with her to just meet with her and talk about the things that we don't understand. Um, and it's honestly up to you as a student to take that initiative and meet with your professor because it's not that uh, the opportunity isn't available, it's more of are you going to reach out there and grab it? Um, one of the mistakes that I made in undergrad that I'm trying to learn from, or that I learned from uh, now that I'm in graduate school is, um, or not medical school, is that just because you feel that you know something doesn't mean you can't still ask for help. Because um, like most of us, I'm sure you're going to reach out and try to grind it out and just like, oh, I'll figure it out. But like the professors are here to help you. Um, so. So far, the most, for the most part, like I said, our faculty members have been very available for us. And the faculty members as well, like, it's depending on your type of learning style, you know, well, who, who's really best for you? It, it depends because not every professor is the same. Right. So, you know, everybody got their own teaching style and just, just how, how they're really just going to introduce, you know, this clinical knowledge to you. So, I don't know, I just, yeah. Good, I, I think you guys answered that question very well. You gave us a nice overview of what it's like uh, day to day for a student, thank you.
Uh, another question, what's it like to live in St. Martin and do you ever get to go home? <laughs> um, Saint Martin, Saint Martin is beautiful. Saint Martin, oh man, is is great. I mean, Saint Martin is just it's pretty much your home away from home. They try to make it as comfortable as possible. There's plenty of food, a lot of a lot of things to do. You can go jet skiing, you know, uh, scuba diving, you know, go on boats. Go on boats. The beach is right around the corner. So like at the same time, you know, you're in school. This is also paradise. I want to say a vacation, but it's definitely not a vacation. Yeah. <laughs> but it, 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 it's a great place to be. And, you know, as well as going over to the UK and experiencing, you know, uh, a different side of the spectrum, I'd rather be here in the warmth. <laughs> so St. Martin, Martin is a great place to be. That's that's my thing. Yeah. And also, you, um, I had the luxury of going home this weekend. Um, a brother of mine was getting married. So um, I just had to fill a leave of absence form, and the school allowed me to go home to, to see his wedding. So yes, you can go home. Just make sure your priorities are in line. That's all. Echo. Yeah. <laughs> and that helps a lot. Brian just said Echo, which is our um, the recordings of the lectures, because attendance isn't required. So um, as, with that said, it depends on your learning style. Like for me, I prefer studying at home, so I don't attend the I don't physically attend class, but Echo, I watch the, le the lectures religiously because you are, ultimately, you're still in school. So, yeah, it's doable. And you do get to go home between semesters as well. We should mention that. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Um, we have uh, a few more minutes left. Um, so, what advice? Do you have to pre-med students? Um, you know, these are there's a lot of prospective students, and they're thinking about uh, attending medical school, um, and maybe they're still in their undergraduate degree, and they're starting the application process. What would what advice would you give to somebody who's pre-med and who's looking to start this medical school endeavor? Something that I wish I would have done in my undergrad experience was not just focus on the pre-med requirements per se. So at my school, you know, you know what requirements you have to take to be, you know, to apply for med school, but there are also courses that you're recommended to take if you do want to go to medical school, such as anatomy and physiology, such as immunology and so forth. Those courses help. So if you have the opportunity to take those courses, do so. Yeah, granted, it'll be much more in depth when you get to medical school, but it will definitely help you and you won't be like, uh huh? <laughs> you know, when, when you, you know, you introduce to those things, you'll at least have some idea of what's going on. For example, um, prior to my time here, I had never taken anatomy. And the first day, I literally almost cried because I was just like, what is this? I don't know what you're talking about. I, and it's just, I was, honestly, I was scared. I mean, granted, I did make it through. I, you know, I, fig I, I figured it out, but it was very intimidating. So again, if you have that chance to to take some of those courses or at least be introduced to some of those, you know, things that they recommend that are not necessarily mandatory, please do so. And it'll pay off in the long run. So yeah, that's something I wish I would have done. Anyone else? Um, my advice, um, and this is definitely from personal experience, so I'm a little quite passionate about it, but my advice is don't give up. Um, there are so many stumbling blocks in my pathway to get to medical school. And um, you, you surround yourself around your pre-medical students. And like you see that certain people are like getting straight to where you want to be. And you question yourself as like, what's wrong with me? Or why, why can't I do this? And why am I, am I unable to do this? And um, through my experience, I learned that there's not only one way to get to your dream. Like if this is truly something that you're passionate about, then you can find a way. Um, whether it be maybe do a post back program if your grades aren't strong enough, or of course it sucks, but retake it at MCAT. Um, applying to Caribbean schools if you don't happen to get to a US school. Um, there's so many different ways to become a doctor that don't compare yourself or don't um, short yourself or sell yourself short thinking that you're not good enough to be 
where we are now. And I'm not even saying we're at a great spot, like a high up spot now, but I'm just saying like, you can get to where we are and it's not impossible. Just remember, keep your goal in mind and stay focused and do what you can to achieve it. I say mainly practice good studying habits now, like start developing that now so that um, when you get to med school, you're not learning how to study. Um, kind of piggyback in off of what Ashton said, um, really, if you really want this, go, go, go get it, go grab it. And, you know, at the same time, one thing I would say that's very important while you're going through this medical school um, experience, if you do go decide to come to AUC or any medical school, in fact, um, learn to love it. You know, get passionate about it, you know, because if there's real passion with what you're doing, you're, you're really going to, it's, it's going to stick with you. You know what I'm saying? Instead of just straight memorizing all this, you know, take it a little bit deeper. Take your time, you know, get, get to love what you're doing. And, you know, once you finally do that, you know, there's, you know you're interested in it and you, you're going to keep seeking more. And I think that's what really sparks and drives you into it, like realizing why why are you really doing this and what do you what do you want to gain from this? And just following that whole outlook on it, you know, just gives you a great direction and as long as you just keep being passionate about it and knowing what you want, you know, you you're going to see. So yes. Um and the last my last little advice, little piece of advice, no matter where you choose to go to medical school, um, but especially like an island, a Caribbean Cool. Remember why you're here. Um, it's so easy to get distracted because of the beauty that you're surrounded by, and um, you might see some of your classmates who might go and, I don't know, party every weekend or have fun every weekend, but then the grades reflect what they're doing. Um, not that I'm saying like you can't have fun, like I said before, but remember your purpose for being here. You can always have fun but you're here to be a doctor. So don't forget that. Well, Brian, Ashley, Leanne, and Nick, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for sharing your experiences as AUC students and members of BMSA. Um, I know everyone in the audience appreciated hearing your candid experiences. Um, and again, to the audience, if you have any questions um, that were not answered tonight, feel free to reach out. Um, we will send you this recording so that you have it uh, to reference um, if you want to listen to it again to learn more about the program uh, or to hear our students' answers. Or you can reach out to me if any questions uh, come up at a later time. Um, again, thank you all for being in attendance and have a great evening.